Okay, so this video is going to help you all learn how to create a geocaching listing on the site. So once you've created your account and logged in, on the main page you're going to go to the play at the top of the screen and you're going to hit hide and seek a cache. Once this page is loaded, on the right hand side below the video you're going to see something that's called create a geocache. That you're going to want to hit. Even if you have your coordinates yet or not, this is a great time to put in everything else and then if you need to still get your coordinates, you can take a GPS, go out and get your coordinates before finally submitting to be reviewed. Um, sometimes the screen will pop up before this that says you need to set your home location. I usually just put in my home address for that. Quick and simple gets you to this screen. Um, if you already know your coordinates, you're going to go to here to continue already know. And then another screen will pop up that will allow you to input the coordinates exactly as they are. You're going to select either whether it's traditional or multi. As you're just starting out, typically it's going to be traditional. So you click on the traditional part. And then it'll ask you for the coordinates. Um, what you need to do is, if you don't have them yet, you can just throw in some random coordinates that you either find on Google Earth or on another website. Um, for instance, you'll just start putting them in and the way you put them in is you have to put in the letter north, south, east, and west have to go first. So N, you gotta make sure you have a space in there. And then for instance, for my coordinates, I'm gonna input 43, space 54, give us a minute with that little um, dash up top. Another space, and then 23.11 with a double up top. And then I got to put in the west coordinates. I'm going to space again. I'm going to put in the west. Don't worry about putting in the degree symbol. That does not matter for this. When you're all done, you're going to hit preview on the map. And hopefully, if you already knew your coordinates, it's going to be exactly where you were thinking. If not, then you need to put them in a little bit differently. Um, and sometimes that takes trial and error. If you're just using random ones, that's fine. You go down to the bottom and you'll hit continue. Next, you can add a series of waypoints. Like if you are putting it up a hiking trail, you can add where the trailhead is. If it's at a local park or beach, you might want to add where the parking is specifically. Um, if it's away from the actual caching area. On the third screen, you're going to actually put in the name of the geocache that you're going to be creating. So I'm doing historic Lake Warrior Golf Course. Created by you, date placed, probably the day that you're going to be doing it. Um, and then that brings you down to summary and description. The summary is not the long, long description about the cache. The summary is more or less just um, a quick little sentence or two that might be quickly about the container, whether it's a big, small container. Um, a lot of times people just leave this section blank. The description is where you're gonna put the bulk of your information. This is where you just um, describe the whole experience. So in class, what we'll do is we'll create the descriptions in either Google Drive or somewhere else. You can copy and paste it directly into here and then it's done. Um, this will teach the finders about something um, and I'll also tell them sort of beginning clues on how to find the cache, such as maybe where to park, certain general directions to go. As you keep scrolling down, if you want to add a hint, you can. On the actual pages, these are encrypted when you first look at them, so if you don't want to see them, you don't have to. This is just helpful, especially if it's a harder find to get. Um, For me, I just quickly added one in. If you're naughty, you'll be rewarded. Um, using the word naughty in here, basically telling the finder that it'll probably be in a knot of a tree. And then you can decide if everybody's allowed to see this cache or if it's premium members only. I personally like it when it's everybody because that means people who sign up for free, like you guys can access these. If you're done with that, you'll continue, bring it to the last page. And this is where you're going to determine the size. Um, as we talked about in class, it can be anything from a micro, basically the size of a finger, to a little Tupperware container, 
to a little bit bigger, like called a regular, and a large can even be up to like a five gallon um, bucket. It's basically your preference, and the bigger it is, the more tradables and trackables that you can put in it. And then for difficulty and terrain, um, this can be a little hard for you first for uh, new geocachers to figure out. So what I like to doing is use a system. It'll bring up this really easy to use rating system that'll grade it basically for you. Ask you questions like, does it require an overnight stay? Typically that's a no. The length of the hike. So this is from where you park or where you're starting out. So for me and like Maury, typically they're gonna park right off the side of the road right next to it. So for me, it's going to be less than a half a mile. But if you're doing a hike, say up Mount Musilock, it might be anywhere from half a mile to up to 10 miles, in which case you got to sort of figure out that and put it in accordingly. It's going to ask you what the trail's like, whether it's pavement, whether it's sort of well-marked path, whether there's no path at all. Um, it's going to ask you about the um, path, whether it's bushy or overgrown, like are you going to be doing some bushwhacking, or typically is it pretty easy to step around. It's going to ask you about the terrain elevation, meaning is it a flat terrain? Are you actually going up a mountain um, or a hill? Is there going to be times where you might even need to use um, your backside to get up and down? Um, and the last one is how easy it is to find. You know, is it literally in plain sight? They call these like the parking grabs where you can see them pretty much as you get out of your car. Or is it going to be a little bit more tricky to find. For me, I, because there's many trees around, I'm gonna use this one because it could be in several different one of them. It might take them a few minutes to find it. Um, and then if you're thinking it's really, really well hidden or it's actually might need clues, then you can do it accordingly and make it a, um, a little bit harder. When you're done, you hit rate. It'll bring you to basically what it should be rated. So for me, it's a difficulty of two and a terrain of one. I go back to my other screen. And I'm going to input that. I'm going to do two up here. I'm going to do one and a half. I think it's a little bit more tricky than that. And then this brings you to attributes. Attributes are basically little things that you can tag to the cache that tell, that just give more information to the finders. So if you just highlight them, they'll tell you what each one means. So for me, I'd be looking, there is no parking fee, so I don't have to click that one. You don't need climbing gear or a boat or scuba gear. I would say it's recommended for kids. Takes less than an hour, absolutely. You can find it at all times. Um, it's available, I'm gonna say during the winter. You can, you can use bicycles to get there. Sure, there's no poisonous plants or thorns. So if there's poison ivy around it or ticks, these are good ones to put in, um, especially if, if someone is allergic to them. I'm gonna say that there is parking available near there restrooms are nearby and you're allowed to click up to 15 of these so go through and really decide on which ones are needed stealth definitely with this one you need um, doesn't need maintenance right now doesn't really need teamwork if it does require climbing a tree a little bit you can put that in there um, just so people know before they get going that they might have to climb a tree not a significant hike there is food nearby, there's fuel nearby. It's a very short hike. Um, and then I'll hit continue when I'm done. So after all of that, you get to this reviewer notes. It says you're almost done. Um, basically, this just tells who's ever gonna be reviewing it anything extra that they need to know. This is not gonna be visible by the public when they look at your cache. This is just to help out the reviewer when they're reviewing your submission. Um, as long as you abide by all the rules, really you don't need anything more than just thanks. So I'll hit save and preview. This will bring me to what it'll look like when it's all done. Okay, so this is what the public would see when they click on it. They'll see historic Lake Maury golf course created by you with the coordinates. You can start scrolling down. It would have your big description in there with a little bit of additional hints. You can see that in order to see it, you got to decrypt it. It has a little bit of a map where it is with the attributes. You keep scrolling a little bit of a larger map. So if you want to zoom in, you can and then you would have all the logged visits. So as after you submit it and people start finding it, this is where you see everybody's submissions. Now, if you have to update your coordinates, you're not going to hit this submit for review just yet. Because once you hit this button, it goes to the actual reviewer. This is kind of like your final page beforehand. This is like your preview. If you have your actual coordinates in and you believe this is all done, 
you will hit submit for review and then it is out of your hands and in a couple of days the actual person who's reviewing it will send it back saying yes or no it needs a couple little um, tweaks to it. After all of that, that is how you create a cache for the site. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you do have any questions, please let me know. The video was supposed to help you guys without having me having to go through